Joan London is the longest reigning co-host on early morning television in her nearly 17 years at the helm of Good Morning America. She has seen a lot of changes, changes in broadcasting, changes in her program, and changes in her life. She forged a path for working mothers by balancing her family with her career and sharing those experiences with her audience. She is a television personality that millions of viewers consider a friend, and I am pleased to have her on this broadcast. Welcome. Great Thank to see you. you. Good to be back with well, you Well, it again. is. We did a little stint on Good Morning America a, a year or so ago. Was yep. Fun? Did you enjoy that? I did. It was fun to do that. It's a great show to do. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you get to go and talk to everybody and meet everyone there is in the world, and you get to be a part of the making of history. Yeah. It's just been a great, a great opportunity that I've had for almost 20 years. Hard to believe it's amazing, that. It? It, yes, it is. I mean, it amazes even me. The leap that you took from Sacramento, yes. KCRA, to New York. Yeah. WABC. That was a huge leap. Yeah. But back in those days, there weren't a lot of women going into journalism as there is today. So they were, there was a real search out. There was a real push on to get more women on the air. So they were, you know, canvassing the country for women. And, and you end up there, and you go on to work for WABC. Mm-hmm. As was a the, street reporter. As a street reporter. And Which is really good. You know, I went from a very cushy job of anchoring in Sacramento to a very tough job of street reporting. And it wasn't and easy because you didn't feel no. like that you were sort of that they were everybody was cheering you on to success? No, not really. I, I, I kind of felt that uh, they were waiting to just see if I was going to drown in the city of New York. She's too nice, she's too pretty, she's too what? Too nice and too pretty are pretty much the biggest sins that, uh, yeah. that I had. And I just had determination. And I I'm glad that I spent those five years on the streets of New York because I think that it gives you a certain empathy. It gives you kind of a window to the world that perhaps you didn't grow up in, that perhaps you were a bit uh, sheltered from, and you need that, I think. It's, maybe you need it like, you know, you need to age meat or season a dish so that you uh, have the right compassion and the right empathy when you end up on a, in a seat like I now have at Good Morning America. Because I interview everybody from every subject in the world that you can possibly think of. In fact, it's a much shorter list of who I haven't interviewed. Yeah, and then most of it is live as well. And it's live. You know, and, and it's live, and you've got something else you've got to move to, and, and uh, you come in there, and there's breaking news as well, and so the format, I mean, the format stays the same, but the show is changing as you engage oh, the two times. hours. Oh, many times. Yeah, so when there's a breaking news do, story, you, do. you don't really know what's happening next, and your primary concern is to... Um, have curiosity and incredible focus. Tell me where you are today. This book is called Healthy Living and a Practical Inspirational Guide to Creating Balance, balance in Your Life. Mm -hmm. You have three wonderful kids. Yes. You, have a, you, you have survived divorce yes. with your sanity. Fair enough? Yes. Uh, you've got these stunning photographs in here. Mm -hmm. uh, I, mean, they're, I mean, this is how meditation makes your life better. That's part of it. Uh, there are these I marvelous all pictures those of you walking on the beach. I wanted to say something to you. I wanted them to speak to you. <laughs> they do. They say, this is, <laughs> this is a smart, sexy woman is what they say. But what else do they want them to say? Well, that is important, I think. I think it's important to feel good about who you are and what you are and to have self-confidence. I think if you have self-confidence and good self-esteem, if you take the time to be introspective and understand also your frailties and try to let go of some of your anxieties, which we all carry sure. around. We all have our little suitcases full of our emotions. I love Deepak Chopra, one of the, the many, many writers Side that I've here. read yeah. over the last five years and been very um, affected by. It says, my tormentor is myself left over from yesterday. <laughs> and never a <laughs> He says that for everybody said. or for you? No, for everyone. Because we carry these bags around filled with, with um, guilt, with resentment, with grief and despair, and all those things color the way you see the world. They color the way you feel about yourself. Tell me and what they, they, they really sometimes mess up your interaction with everyone that you come into contact with all day long. And if you just take a few, few moments each day of introspection, people think of this as a luxury. They almost feel guilty about taking quiet, introspective moments for themselves. But I call it mental health time. And I think it's important because only when you examine yourself and your inner being and kind of let go of some of that stuff, can then you grow and move forward. Well, how did you get so smart about things like this? And, <laughs> and what is it that you had to let go of? 
Oh, a lot of things. When you go through divorce, when you go through grief, uh, you know, that affects you. And if you can, if you can accept looking at the problems of life, because they are always going to be there. Nobody can do away with the problems of life. But if you can look at them as opportunities for growth, opportunities for positive change, it really makes them much easier to deal with. And it really will let you move on forward. And a lot of people really get stuck. I remember a woman came on Good Morning America once. She had suffered the worst thing any parent could ever suffer. Her child had been abducted and, and killed. And she said to me, I haven't been able to do anything in the last two years. I have to forgive and forget because a heart filled with anger has no room for love. Mm -hmm. And when people come through your life and they say things like that, those are things that stick with you. Were you angry then after, in terms of after the divorce, as, as oh, sure. you sort of come to grips mm -hmm. with who you are and where you were going? And You know, it's so funny because ex, you, know, you interview people all the time, experts in their fields, and they'll tell you that any kind of a trauma, a loss of a, a loved one or a, or a divorce, usually takes three to five years to recover. And I didn't believe that. You know, I thought, it can't possibly take that long. Well, they're right. And you do have to, I mean, when the day comes that you can let go of all these negative feelings that really weigh you down and can sometimes overshadow all the great things in your life, that's a freeing feeling. And it's kind of an empowerment. So I just want, to peop I want people to realize, though, that they do have control over that. I don't think a lot of people realize happiness they'll say oh sure she's happy because she has this she's or got this happened to her happiness isn't the result of something that someone else does happiness is your attitude and it starts with you dale carnegie has written about positive the power of positive right. thinking forever and he says be happy and act happy and if you act happy you will tend to be happy and i walk downstairs every morning to the studio and before i walk in the door i put a smile on my face and it really affects your attitude. And interestingly, it can affect everybody else in the room when you walk in. If you are happy and you show that you're confident. Let me talk about confidence and self-esteem. You look better than you've ever looked in your life. Thank you. Well, you do. Don't you feel that? Yes, I do. I, and I, you've worked at it to be... Uh, oh, yes. I've worked at it. And there, you, there are inner workouts and outer workouts. The physical workout, we've gotten that message, what, for two decades yeah, now, right, that we right. can take charge of our own health and our own fitness. But there's also the inner workout, and that's positive affirmation. That's taking time to relax, understanding that there are de-stressing techniques. I mean, these are all little, little workouts that we all need to do on a daily basis, in my opinion. And people can work at being happier. What will it mean to you if some ABC executive comes to you and says, Joan, you have made a huge contribution to Good Morning America. We've just signed a new contract with three years for you. But we want to change Good Morning America, which has been your home for the last whatever years. Uh, what do you say? Do you say, mm -hmm. okay, i got a lot of things to do with my life. It's an exciting opportunity. When a door closes, a window opens. Or do you say, who the hell are you? <laughs> Get nope. out of my house. You just, you really just hit it. When one door closes, another opens. And if you can keep that attitude, you've really got one of the secrets to happiness in life. Yeah. I would write them a letter and say, thank you for 20 of the most exciting years, a ticket to adventure. And if I have my own self-confidence, my own self-esteem, and I know I do what I do well, then I can take that and I'll go off. And maybe sometimes change like that is necessary for growth to go on to something else. So in, in a way, if somebody would come to you and say, not Good Morning America anymore, it might be doing you a favor. Sure, you, I, would get my, I would get excited about another project that, you know, maybe it's some what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a very comfortable 20 years at Good Morning America. Uh, and it's a platform for all sure, the other things you it do. It is my platform. Right. Going out on tour around the country, having women come through a line and say, thank you for inspiring me. That is an, that's a very unique and awesome opportunity that I have gotten. And I've gotten it because of my appearances on Good Morning America, because of that relationship with that person that's at home somewhere there in their house, in their bathroom, in their bedroom, in their kitchen, getting ready in the morning. And I'm setting the tone for their day. So I think maybe that, you know, that really helped me and this power of positive thinking and my being such a big believer in it.
but it's i understand the opportunity i've been given by that program and i want to build on that so i'm not sure where it will take me but you're saying i know it will take me somewhere i know that if the right decision is to walk away from this thing i'm prepared to do that oh gosh with no reservation about the future and no fear of the future interesting five years ago i could not have answered you honestly yes to that question and you're sure honestly you can today, today i can because i have the confidence and i can get excited about moving on and using some of the things some of the tools some of the opportunities the connection that i've made with people that watch every morning in another venue and i think we all set self limits i think everybody does and and i have too in the past which I, is a terrible thing to do it isn't is it? a terrible thing to do because it's confining and it doesn't allow you to go out and try new things has, but it's scary also to go out and try new things when you've got all kinds of responsibilities yeah. to yourself and to kids and to getting rid of self limits is a wonderful thing because it's exciting but it's also daunting and it's scary but then there came a time in which Joan London said to herself I'm not gonna let him or her or him or them define who I am and what mm, I'm about I'll define who I am and I if they want to bring their perceptions about me to the table that's their problem not mine. not mine and you have to go out and you have to have belief in yourself. I always say that to my three little girls, the most important quality or gift I can pass on to them is self-esteem, a belief in themselves, a belief that they can do anything that they want to try to achieve. Um, I think that I'm giving that to them. They have very, very high ambitions and I'm watching their self-esteem grow. What do they want to do and be? See, that's what I think is so great and so interesting. They haven't decided and they're choosing. I mean, they have, each one of them has four or five things. I love that. I love the fact that they think they can do all those things. What's the greatest misconception about you today, you think? Today. Ooh, Notwithstanding boy. all these books and all those videotapes and, and all that you have accomplished that lingers, that bothers you. That's very interesting because it would have been so easy easy to answer that years ago because years ago we were fighting kind of the dumb blonde mm -hmm. uh, aspect I guess today I don't know everybody sees me on the air in the morning and they they I think they've seen a change but I don't think they can put their finger on it and you can't I can't they see the physical change the taking charge of your health but I don't know if they can recognize what that other change is and that other change in my opinion is a self-confidence with which comes along with an exuberance and um, a value of lifetime as you're going through it I think I used to rush through life I think I missed a lot of good moments and I've only learned in recent years because of I'm interrupting you but because of ambition because no just keeping you were up with the scared case. because you wanted to prove yourself because probably all those things yeah. And when you get, when you, all you have to really do is just be honest with yourself and recognize that you are doing all those things and that they are all human things and you shouldn't be mad at yourself for doing all of those things. But I like the fact that I've learned to enjoy life more because when you stop and you appreciate all the little things in your life, it gives your life more meaning. What's most fulfilling for you outside of television? Oh, my daughter's definitely my daughters um, on a personal level uh, daring to try new things that I used to say weren't possible if you would have told me 10 years ago that I was going to climb mountains yeah. um, I would have told you huh, or jump have you jumped out of a someone plane someone else no I haven't jumped I out of look, a plane it just looks like you're in a helicopter or something yes. here in one of these shots but I, I, we, I jumped off a bridge in a mountain <laughs> but you know what I never do anything that isn't controlled by experts in that field because I, I do I uh, have three daughters, and I, I, I don't ever want to do anything irresponsible, and I don't, that's not what I'm suggesting to other people. And I'm not even suggesting that they have to climb mountains. Everyone should just find their own passion, something where they, you know, lose a sense of time and where they let go of the complexities of life, and then follow that passion, because so that's how you age gracefully. So you approach bungee jumping with no fear, parasailing oh, no, with no fear, very, very, flying very an Air Force fearful. jet with no fear. <laughs> Roll tape. Here is Joan London doing some of the carefree things that she does. Roll tape. That's cool. That's 
This is our favorite part of the whole show right Don't now, I gotta tell you. Rubber. This is, this is a bungee rope right here. See it? I mean, it's a, it's a thick, but uh, when pulled hard, <laughs> it stretches a lot. Now, let me, let's take you right now up to the bridge where we jumped, 148 feet up. Three, now watch, two, you, one. you literally have to out. dive off 148 feet. And the whole, the whole secret of the whole thing is never look down. Never look down when you're standing up there because when you're out there, it is the scariest thing you can ever imagine. As if it wasn't enough, we went up the gondola and then we hiked up the rest of the mountain up to the very tippy top of Bob's Peak. And there we <laughs> attached ourselves to an expert. We're not that crazy. And we, but we ran off the side of the mountain. <laughs> I mean, you literally just start walking forward and you'll see here, it just drops off right under you. You fly out. We made a sharp left turn here. He said, I'm going to peel to the left. And you fly out over the We're mountain, you come down. That's that's the village down below. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. For all those good born American folks. No scummer. Oh, this is the best. Woo! You just said to me you've had an incredible full life. I really have. I'm even amazed by it. And, you know, I'm just so grateful for it, too. And it's just beginning. That's right. Isn't that interesting that I don't think of, I mean, I, do, I think of it as a whole new door opening and that I'm taking this whole new direction. I don't even know who put me or what put me down this path of being kind of an, an inspirational leader, but I'm going to go ahead and walk down that path. An inspirational leader in terms yeah. of someone who is Some, in touch with... Someone who's accessible that can help inspire others to take charge of their happiness to make them believe they can do that and then give them the tools to do that. Who are your heroes? In this field, my heroes are John Kabat-Zinn, who wrote a book called Wherever You Go, There You Are. He taught me that you can't stop the waves, but you can learn to surf. Deepak Chopra, there's a, several other powerful writers, David Viscott, who said, our purpose here on this earth is to find our gift, perfect it, and then give it to others. I think that might be what I'm doing now. Thank you, Joan. Healthy Living, a practical, inspirational guide to creating balance in your life. Joan London and Laura Morton. Much success. Uh, thanks. Great to have Good you. to see you. Thank, you. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow night.